Hi, this is Larry. This is my new Video Concat Organizer application, which is a web-based page. And this is just a preview of it here. But before I get into uh, a demonstration on how it operates, I'd like to talk a little bit about preparation of the types of videos that you're going to use for a source. And you probably already know this stuff, but let me just go through it. Um, let me start off with this information. Since the final goal is to be playing a fairly large video, this a concatenation of several small clips, in an HTML5 video player, there's a few things, uh, limitations that you might run into, and uh, excuse any spelling errors on this page, <laughs> The main thing is, is that the application uses FFmpeg under the covers. Now, FFmpeg has to be installed on your web server, and it has to be entered into the path and the environment variables. Once you have that, you can open up a command prompt and type in FFmpeg hyphen version, and you should get some kind of a return just to verify that uh, it is finding FFmpeg in your path no matter what directory your command prompt is in. Okay, once you've determined that, the next thing that you have to consider is that FFmpeg has some problems with certain file types depending upon what encoder created the original video that you've been given as a source. And I've listed those file types here. These are ones that Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Uh, the ones in red, I've never gotten to work. Of course, I don't have a, a decent source to uh, get an AVI file or a, a WMF. I have tested MPGs, and it does not like them for some reason, at least in the context that, that I'm using the encoder in. So just be aware of those, that list of file uh, extensions. And down on the HTML, five side you probably already know this for sure the player only supports three formats mp4 webm and ogg now this is not an issue at all because everything we're going to be giving it is an mp4 okay now that that has been said and done let's go take a look at premiere and what i'm going to do is i'm going to open i'm going to create a new project and make sure that uh, the settings are correct for you to be able to um, have your timelines automatically adjust for the uh, video format that you're bringing into the timeline, as opposed to having a preset format that you're trying to bring in some odd video into a preset that doesn't match. Anyway, I'm just going to start a new project. You'll understand better after I show you. Okay, I'm starting a new project. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to call it test two, since I've already got some other tests out there. And uh, okay, sequence one. That's fine. I don't care. Now here's here's my new sequence. Everything is defaulted to whatever the settings were the last time I created a project in. Premiere. So yours may look different. The main thing is is to go into file uh, I guess it's edit edit preferences um, under general and look all the way down at the bottom here you'll see show match sequence settings to clip dialog. Make sure that that's checked um, and Uncheck render audio when render. Uh, I guess that one doesn't matter. Anyway, just try to match these settings so that possibly you can recreate the same uh, behavior that I'm going to get. And then just press OK. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a new sequence here. And you'll see you're presented, e even though I already have a default one there. This is my default sequence settings. 
the sequence one that you see over to the left here has automatically inherited this settings because these are the settings that I chose the last time I created a project. So you can see that mine is set to HDB 1080p at 30 frames a second. Um, it doesn't really matter what you select here. Um, the main thing is you want that dialog box to pop up that asks you, let me demonstrate it here, that asks you the question, let me come over here, let me just find a video to drop in this. Okay, we don't have a, okay. Let's try this one here. I'm going to drop this video into my project and I'm going to put it on this timeline. Now it's going to pop up. It says clip mismatch warning. This clip does not match the sequences settings. Change sequence to match the clip settings. And the default you see is keep existing settings. This is what you don't want. And if you're not getting this message popping up, then it's going to choose that default for you. And I'm running uh, Adobe Premiere Pro CS6. Apparently, uh, CS5 and down didn't have this, um, and it just made the best guess or whatever algorithm they use for that. And if you click this, if you uncheck this always ask, it's going to change the setting you just set in your edit preferences. So always leave that check because you always want to be asked this question. Okay, I'm going to say change sequence settings. Okay, now if we come out here, you'll see in your preview window up here, it's 16 by 9 with, with no uh, black on the top, bottom, or sides. Um, now let's try the same thing. If I create another sequence, new sequence, only this one I'm going to set to, uh, let's go some 4x3 format, NTSC standard um, 48 kilohertz. Okay, this sequence here, as you can see, that changed to a, a SD or 4x3 aspect ratio. Now if I drop this same clip in there, it's going to say the same question, but this time I'm going to say keep existing settings. And now when I look at the timeline, it's all screwed up. You see, it's all zoomed in. Now one way you can fix that is if you wanted to, uh, let me see, if you double click on that, you used to be able to size these things. Let me see. Let's zoom out to 25%. When you double click this, it allows you to resize it. But you'll see, you can get it down there, but this is not the way to work. You don't want to have to resize stuff that you put on a timeline where the sequence doesn't match the original video. So that's why it's important always to match your uh, your sequence to the video coming in. Anyway, that point has been made now. Now let me move on to something else. I'll go back to sequence one, get rid of these. Go back to sequence one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this in here and I'm gonna say change the sequence settings. This is the correct way to do it. Okay, now everything looks cool. I have an audio and a video track. That's cool. And notice that the audio is the same length as the video. If we zoom in, uh, let me move this towards the end here. Just move, hit the end key. And if I zoom in all the way, you can see that they're exactly the same length. Okay. All right, the reason I wanted to point that out is because here, I'm going to drop another clip in here. And this is very important. Oops, that's wrong. 
Let's say I have another clip, and this one has a completely different, potentially a completely different format than the original Serenity, this Lean on Art. If I drag that into this timeline, it's not going to ask me that question. The reason is, is because it assumes, since that sequence setting is there, and you've already nailed that sequence uh, setting down by inheriting that of Serenity, when you put this in there, this one could potentially be all screwed up. See? It's all messed up. Because the sequence is set to the settings for Serenity and not Lean On Me. Okay? So just beware of that. Um, if you're going to uh, encode these things to uh, export them, make sure you don't mix and match them because you're going to end up with a mess. Just do them one at a time. Okay? Okay, that's that point that I wanted to make. One important thing about Adobe Premiere Pro, if your source video is already in MP4, do not bring it into Adobe Premiere and re-encode it for another creature. Just use it as is because the app is going to take that and it's going to convert it directly. If it's an SD, it'll put black bars on the side and fit it into an HD screen. Um, if it's some weird folder, form a widescreen where the top and bottom were already black, um, then your final result is going to have the same thing. It's going to already, it's going to be black at the top and bottom. Um, you can fix it in Adobe Pro. You can stretch it out, but it's going to chop the sides off or, or it's going to distort it. So as a general rule, do not re-encode something that's already in MP4. Just run it through as is without modifying it. Now, if you want to add a soundtrack or something like that, that's a different story. Um, but uh, just keep that in mind. Okay. All right, let's talk a little bit more about the audio being a different length than the video. I'm just going to grab face mask here. I'm going to say change sequence settings. Okay, let me set that to fit so it looks better. That was just the zoom right there. Okay, I'm going to try and create this so that the audio is longer than the video. And to do that, I'm going to right mouse click the audio track and say unlink. And then I'm going to take the video track and I'm going to short it. Now we have the situation here so that you can visually see what I'm talking about. Where the audio track is actually longer than the video track so when the video track ends it goes to black and we still have audio somebody can still be talking there or what have you now here's how the application is going to deal with that it's going to detect that the audio is longer than the video and when you're concatenating them together that makes a big difference because if you go to put another video on here oops that's a bad example if I go to put another, let's simulate the concatenation that the app's going to do, you're going to see there's going to be a big black spot between these two, between the start of one video-wise, um, which is not acceptable. So what the application does to solve this problem is the equivalent of this right here. It makes them both the same size by truncating. Okay, so that way when you go to concatenate these guys together, they're all the same like the audio and video tracks and, and they have a smooth transition from one clip to the other in your master video. Let me just minimize that. The next thing I want to talk about is the folder structure for the application. So let me be sure we're, we're moving into the application description here. Okay, if I go... my D drive you'll see I have an Apache 24 which would be the equivalent of your IIS I guess and when inside uh, once inside there HT docs is the home directory for the web server under that I have video builder and there's a folder called videos under video builder 
Under that is original apples and oranges. This is the folder you're going to go in and you're going to share it out. Um, well, I don't need to show you that. This has to be a shared folder from your web server. That allows you to drop any new videos into this, just like you currently have going on. Only your uh, folder name, your shared folder name is probably different. Then you have two other folders here that are pertinent. You have green apples, which is the folder that'll be the same exact videos as apples and oranges, only after they had been encoded to a common format. Um, you'll see that in here you have four videos. Don't worry about thumbnails and hold right now. Hold a, isn't it supposed to uh, exist. That's something I've got going on. But thumbnails will be created and the thumbnails are just PNG files that represent the first frame of every video in this apples and oranges um, folder. If you go into green apples, you'll see the same exact thing. There's its thumbnails with the same exact files because these have already ran through my application. And these are all of the same exact format, both video and audio wise. Um, the last one is the concat folder. And this is your final video, which is the concatenation of everything from your green apples folder. All right, that's the folder structure. Now, moving on. Let me check my list here. Previous operation. Okay, let's take a look at how the, the program is operated. When you run it by default, it's showing you the folders in apples and oranges. You have a tab at the top that you can switch between green apples and apples and oranges. Um, okay, to create a new master video, you just take a couple of these and you drag and drop them over onto this timeline here. And you can do the, you can drag stuff from apples and oranges, or you can drag stuff that's already been encoded from green apples. I just want to show you the difference. Um, once you've dragged them over, you can reorder these things just by dragging and dropping them. You can watch them. Um, it'll play the video here. All right. And if you hit the delete button, it will delete it from the list. And it, that one was from the apples and oranges. So as you can see under apples and oranges, I deleted symptoms and it put a red line under it, meaning that you've already removed this from the time from the uh, final output once and if you want to put it back you can go ahead and drag it back and as you drag it you'll see things move out of the way for you to drop it all right once you have something on there take take a look at these LEDs okay a flashing red LED indicates that it's something that has to be encoded there's two of those and both of those are apple and oranges that's why they have to be re-encoded to the standard green apple format. Now, we had pulled in these two from green apples already, and they're yellow-lighted because they do not require encoding. All right. Once you have stuff on there that you want to create a, a master video, you just say build video. You click on build video, and it's going to go through, and as it's building it, You'll, these lights will eventually turn green when it's done. And at that point in time, it'll automatically launch a little window with your uh, final video in it. So this, this should only take a minute because those particular ones are short ones. I purposely chose some short ones that should compile pretty quickly. And there they are. They're all green. And it popped up a window. Now this window may not pop up because you're, if you have your pop-up blocker on your browser blocking it, um, you can always tell it not to block any pop-up that comes from um, this video concat organizer, which I've already done in Firefox. So I'm running Firefox here. Um, okay, so once it brings up that video, you have to hit the play button. Um, they set up just in the past couple of years they made it so that all browsers are not able to auto play any video for whatever reason they all complied to that rule and then you can play it um, 
it's automatically set to loop. This will automatically loop because uh, in the code, I set the player to tell it to loop through here, so it'll play indefinitely, okay? You can also um, full screen it, of course, and it'll loop indefinitely. So I believe this is what you're looking for. Um, some of these test files out of the five, I think uh, three of them don't have soundtracks. Now, if you understand the 12 steps or the... Three of them don't have soundtracks and two of them do. So that's a problem you'll have to sort out on the front end from whatever you're trying to create here, whether you want sound or not. If you want me to put a checkbox up here in the upper left that says include audio and by default is checked and then you can uncheck it and it'll just create videos with no audio as a master i can do that too in the future i don't know if you want to play audio or not okay next uh you can view the most recent final video at any time by clicking on final video okay and if that pop-up blocker prevents it from coming up, then you can always click that to force it up as opposed to uh, telling your browser to allow pop-ups. Okay, the next thing, let's say that you got the final video and you say, oh, no, I forgot to include um, this video right here. Okay, so you can go ahead and add that. Um, make sure it's the one that you wanted. God. Yeah, it looks Grant good. Grant me the serenity to accept the so things. So you can click I on this again to cannot change. Start or stop it. Um, you can go between each one of them like this by clocking now, through them. Okay. If you understand. Um, okay, and so I added that one on there. And what was it called? Serenity or something? Yeah, serenity. And I want to also move it up to the top. The one I forgot, I'm going to move it up to the top. Then you can just rebuild the video again. Now, if I choose this to rebuild again as is, it's going to re-encode all three of these guys again because they're all apples and oranges. So one way around that, so that I don't only have to record the, the new one that I added, is I can go over to Green Apples and find Symptoms um, or symptoms right here and I can put that one in here and then delete the one from, from there and then the face mask one since that one's already in green apples I can do the same thing to that that way I have as many green apples that don't have to be encoded in there and I'm only going to be re-encoding the one that the new one I just added and of course they build video and it should go very fast right now so you might want to think about taking all of your source videos and just running them through this thing to create a master video of everything you got. And then you can always go back and uh, change it um, you know, create a new master video and just select from your green apples since you've already re-encoded them all. So that's, that's a way to ma really make things move along quicker. Um, just food for thought there. All right, that appears to be it for the demonstration here. I'm sure I might have forgotten something, but um, you'll be able to figure it out yourself most likely.